Hey everyone, Charting Man Dan from ChartGuys.com. You know, behind every single video that we put out every single day, there's a wonderful community of traders that we want to invite you to be a part of. Try the free seven-day trial and gain access to our live market broadcasts every morning and afternoon. Interact with hundreds of like-minded traders or take part in one of our dedicated chat rooms, each led by an analyst that's there to answer your questions in real time. Our trial is risk-free with absolutely no commitment or credit card required to experience the TCG community. For those looking for a head start in technical analysis, check out our entries and exits course in the link below in the description. Get up to speed with the fundamentals of TCG technical analysis and experience over five hours of great community-driven trading education. Checking in on SPY, reminder we've got the FOMC tomorrow 2 p.m. Eastern. and that's going to dictate the short-term direction of these markets. SPY was an inside bar today, very tight range, a bull break of 238.98, a bear break of 238.30 if that occurs tomorrow. But if those breaks do occur tomorrow before the FOMC, I will take them with a grain of salt because, again, it is going to be the FOMC that is the driving force in the short term. This is normal, healthy, sideways consolidation. The bulls will take it, a two-day gap up, big move to the upside, and then sideways consolidation for five days. That's a good sign of healthy, bullish action. The weekly time frame certainly favoring the bulls as well. All exponential and moving averages are support. On the verge of a bullish MACD cross, if we can continue to all-time highs, just a reminder that the S&P 500 does have a double top just under the all-time high, a little lower high by $4. So we need to see a break of 2401 on the S&P 500. SPY already got the adjusted for dividend price to a new all-time high, but the S&P 500 itself has not yet. IWM, weak, not confirming the bullish reversal candlestick from yesterday, and a lower low form today. So we're down looking now at 138.49 and then the gap to fill at 137.55. So watching to see if the bulls can turn things around. But as of right now, the bears are in control of the short term. But considering the big bull move that we saw, this is normal healthy consolidation at this point. And when, again, whenever I say that, I'm looking at the size of the bull move and the amount of consolidation. So I'd say right now we've given back about a third of the move to the upside on this four-day consolidation. The weekly time frame is rejecting from the upper Bollinger Band. We are struggling at these resistance levels, and that's just under 140. So a big upper wick and a bearish reversal doji, another rejection on this weekly candlestick, and unlikely, unless we see a big bull reaction to the FOMC, it is unlikely we will see the bulls are able to get over that upper Bollinger Band. QQQ, new all-time high, seventh day in a row. This is a bearish reversal, dragonfly doji, even though we did close up near the high of the day. We are still having the upper Bollinger Band of support, but it is ascending so rapidly that it is going to be hard for the bulls to maintain this level. We're going to have to see an eighth all-time high in a row tomorrow in order to maintain this upper Bollinger Band. Otherwise, we look for normal healthy consolidation. 137.02 would be the first support. Apple had a bearish reaction to earnings, so that's certainly not going to help the tech sector, which is very heavily weighted in QQQ here. And we're just looking at the lows of every previous day as a support level if and when we do begin to consolidate, which we know is in the near-term future, considering the size and strength of the move that we've seen to the upside over the past couple weeks. Weekly time frame shows the strength extremely strong three bull weeks in a row, and they're almost green maraboses with the open being the low of the week and the close being the high of the week. So FOMC will dictate short-term direction in all of these markets tomorrow. No rate hike is anticipated in May. If we do get a rate hike, it's going to be a very bearish reaction. And it's going to be the forward-looking language that the market does react to. So we'll check back in tomorrow and see how it all plays out. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you then.